Good morning and welcome to worship. Special welcome to those of you who are visiting. It's a great joy to have you with us. Special welcome also to those joining us on Facebook Live and those joining who will be watching the video later on YouTube. As we gather this morning, may the Spirit of the Lord work within us. As we gather, may we glorify the Lord. And as our hearts begin to worship, may we be blessed because we came. We begin our worship this morning by singing hymn number 493. <clears throat>
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. reading from the first book of Samuel. The Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slug between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear had weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out? to draw up for battle. Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and service. And the Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we might fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked to them, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before, and David heard him. David said to Saul, Let no one's hearts fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You're not able to go against this Philistine and fight with him. You're just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep the sheep of his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the door, bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head, 
clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the arm and he tried in vain to walk, but he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I can't walk with these. I'm not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and draw near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. Now the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew near, to meet David. David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine in the forehead, and the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today we will do antiphonal. So the people on the right will say before the askers, after the answers to the people on the left. The Lord will be a refuge for the rest, a refuge in time of God, and of those who are not in your name will proclaim Christ in you. For we may never forsake those who seek the Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the people the things he has done. The avenger of God will remember them. accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time, see, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found in our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance and afflictions and hardships and calamities. 
and beatings and imprisons, riots, labor, sleepless nights, hunger by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Some of you may have heard this story many times before, but I will repeat it because I think it's relevant to today's uh, message, to, the, to today's theme. Some of you know that I was born in Rwanda and at the age of three we moved to, we migrated to Uganda. And at the age of 19 I came back to my ancestral village. Uh, the village where I was born is between two lakes. Uh, and so we have, we use the lake to cross both sides. And um, when I arrived at age 19, I, I was looking for a job. And the one place I knew I was a job was across one of this, uh, one of the lakes. And uh, so I needed to find a way to go look for a job there. And looking for jobs in Rwanda at that time, you had to go stand at the gate and hope that somebody, a manager, will come by the gate looking for people who are looking for work. So you would go as many times as you can until you give up and stand at the gate and hope that somebody will come and say, I'm looking for uh, somebody. So, uh, getting there, crossing the lake, as you know, is not that easy. And a relative of mine said, okay, I will loan you a canoe. And he had this tiny canoe that could only fit one person, but could fit two young people. So uh, since I was 19, there was another relative, a young man, who was about 16, we could uh, bear the feet into it, sit in it and not sink it. So that's the canoe we use. And mind you, I don't swim until today, because where I grew up in Uganda, there were no legs, and so I didn't learn to swim. And when I came back at 19 and tried to learn to swim, the boys said, no, you can't. You're too old, you'll sink. I'm told that's not true, but I still believe it. <laughs> that's why I've not tried to learn how to swim. So I couldn't swim. So we are in this little canoe, uh, two of us, and the water is almost at the edge. So twice on one of those on those trips, so we made several trips. At least twice, the 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 lake was troubled by the wind, the storm. Uh, and I remember on both occasions, as soon as the the water was troubled, the water began to get into the canoe because remember, there's not much uh, age um, and. I remember one day as the water began to come into the, the canoe, the young man who was an expert because he had grown up there, he said, you need to remove the water. And here is somebody, no life jackets. I am trying to remove the water with my hands as he is trying to navigate the canoe that almost is getting under. On both occasions, we made it not through the wind, but we had to turn. One time we had to, to aim at another place straight, uh, instead of turning into the wind where it was coming from to go to our place, we had to go straight and docked at a nearby place. Another time he said, we need to turn and go with the wind. Uh, and so we did, and on both times we, we survived. I share this story because the story, the gospel story we just uh, read, uh, talks about the fear that the disciples had uh, of perishing because it's a real issue there. Even though most people in my village are very good 
with swimming and whatever. In fact, we, it's stories are told of people who would like during farming times who would swim across to steal like bananas and put them on their back and swim with them uh, back with, with, with them. So they are very, most people are very good, but there is not a month that passes without somebody who is very good drowning in the lake. So the danger of drowning is very real. So I can know, I can understand the fear of, of, of drowning. As I read through these stories, the story of Goliath and David, and the story of the disciples, I remembered a verse that you will hear me quote uh, very often. John chapter 16, verse 33. These are the words of Jesus to his disciples before he went to Jer before he was crucified and was going to heaven after the resurrection. He said this, uh, John 16 verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. In other words, trouble is inevitable in this world. And yet, Jesus is saying, take heart, there's help. Both these stories, the story of David and Goliath, and the story of the disciples and the storm, demonstrate what the psalmist is saying in the psalm we just read. Here again what the psalmist says, the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Perhaps one of the most difficult questions we face as pastors is why is this not always true? It doesn't seem that God is always there in our time of trouble. And my immediate answer is always, I don't know. I don't understand everything about God. But I also know some things about God. I know that God does indeed save us from the time of trouble. I also know that sometimes God saves us by one, taking away the trouble that happens. Sometimes God intervenes in ways that the trouble, the risk, the danger just disappears. And in other times, perhaps more often, than not, God saves us by carrying us through the trouble. In other words, by strengthen us, strengthening us to endure the trouble. And it seems to me that that's exactly what St. Paul is talking about in the letter we just read his letter, his second letter to the Corinthians. These are his words. As servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, and many, many other troubles. 
God has given them great endurance. That is sometimes, in the fact, more often than not, how God saves us from the time of trouble. So the question perhaps we should be asking is, how does that happen? How are we able to be saved in times of trouble? What does it take to be saved from the time of trouble? There are certainly several lessons from the Goliath, David and Goliath story, from the disciples and the storm story, and indeed from the testimony of the psalmist and the testimony of St. Paul in the letter to the Corinthians. And I found at least three things that are present, that, that are important to be able, in times of trouble, things that help us be saved, be rescued in times of trouble. One is to remember to remember, and there are several things to remember. One is to remember that our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Our struggle is against spiritual forces the things that trouble us, whether they have come in a form of humans or not, have a spiritual component. And so they have a spiritual solution. Two, remember what God has done before. The number one thing that sustained David, made David able to overcome Goliath, he remembered what God had done before. Listen to what he said, the Lord who saved me from the power of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. One of the devil's tactics to really frighten us and they oppress us is to make us forget. When we forget what God has done before, then the devil has us. Then we can be devastated. But when we can look back and remember those times when God has come through, when God has saved us, then we are halfway to victory. Remember what God has done before. Second thing we need to do in times of trouble, believe. Believe. The psalmist puts it beautifully. Those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. This is a testimony from one who had tried it over and over and over. And I'm a witness to that, that when we trust in the Lord, we will not be disappointed. God will either take away the trouble, or God will give us the strength to endure the trouble. Third, we need to act. There is always something we can do or we need to do. And the course of action you take will depend on the circumstances and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In the case of David, he needed to do a lot. Yes, he remembered, he believed, but also he needed to do something. And sometimes it doesn't take much. He couldn't wear the armor of Saul 
but he needed to do something. And when the Philistine drew nearer to him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. Sometimes you need to confront the situation head on. And I admit that some people are better at that than others. And then David put his hand in his back. He needed to do that in this circumstance. Took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face on the ground. And so sometimes, we play a significant role in this rescue process that plays a role we are called to, 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 to play. Remember David saying, the Lord does not save by sword and spear, but that does not mean that you have no role at all. What role you play in this process of getting out of your trouble will depend and that's why prayer is very important for guidance for the disciples they didn't need to do a lot all they needed to do was cry out cry out sometimes all you need is to cry out i'm reminded of the words of saint paul again romans 10 verse 10 Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you need to do sometimes is simply call upon the name of the Lord. I've had testimonies of people who say, I just said, Jesus, Jesus. Just calling that name and the rescue was right there. I do not know what kind of trouble you're going through right now. Maybe you are dealing with a person who is like a Goliath, or a situation, a Goliath situation, something that terrifies you, and terrifies everyone else. Wherever you look for help, everyone says, no, you, that, that, that's impossible. There's no help. How I pray that like David, you remember how far God has brought you and that you believe in this God who is our refuge in times of trouble and that somehow you discern what actions you can do to get out of this trouble. It is possible that you are faced with the kind of situation like the disciples were faced with, where, where there is nothing you can do. A situation that money cannot help, doctors cannot help, your friends can't help, only God can help. How I pray that you call upon the name of the Lord. For indeed, Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe this could be your day. I'm encouraged once again by this word, some of my favorite words of scripture. Second Corinthians 6 verse 1 and 2. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of your salvation.
how I pray that whatever it is you are going through, you will remember, you will believe, and you will act. And maybe, maybe, this may be your day, the day of your salvation. And indeed I pray that today will be the day of your salvation. For all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. For you are our refuge in times of trouble. Thank you for reminding us of this truth. Lord, you know each one of us. Some of us are going through a lot of troubles, even right now. Troubles, some like Goliath kind of situations. Some of us are going through storms. Many of us are frightened and terrified. How I pray that this will be the day of our salvation, the day of our rescue. Teach us, O oh God, to remember. Teach us to believe. Help us to believe that you are indeed our rescue, our refuge. And help us to cry out to you. For this indeed may be the day of our salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Even now, come and save us. For you are indeed mighty to save. And all who call upon your name shall be saved. Thank you. We bless you, we honor you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I invite you now to stand with me as we affirm what we believe according to the Nicene Creed as printed on page 6 of our bulletins. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, he not made, but the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake was crucified and upon his fire, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we find ourselves in a storm tossed world, let us gather our needs and concerns to call upon our God, saying, O oh God, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, 
Michael, our presiding bishop, Bishop Justin, our bishop, Dabney, our assisting bishop, Samuel, Janice, and Jamie, our priests, Charlie and Dick, our deacons, and all other ministers, may boldly proclaim the message of peace and hope in a fearful world. We pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. prayer. That our parish families, our clergy, our vestry, ministry teams, students, teachers, tutors, ministry partners, and all of our members and friends may be bound together with love and reassure one another for your ever-present help in times of need, we pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. That our households, our churches, our communities, and our cities may be places of communion and mutual support which builds us up and strengthens us in grace and truth. We pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. That a new birth of peace may come among all human families and nations, especially Israel and the Palestinian territories, Ukraine, Democratic Republic of Congo, Haiti, Sudan, and other areas where there is turmoil. Mm -hmm. We renew the spirit of hope in every human society and nation. We pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our nations, especially Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, our legislative and judicial institutions, our local governments, and all in authority may strive for justice, peace, and the dignity of every human being, we pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. That all whose hearts are troubled by sickness of body, mind, or spirit, especially Emily, Shannon, Clay, Marge, Montana, Scott, Marilyn, Amanda, David, Lee, Jane, Brandy, Deborah, Liz, Beverly, Sharon, all who are on our prayer list and all who care for them may be restored to fullness and strength. We pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. Those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Sid, Jim, and others, and those celebrating their anniversaries, especially Mike and Debbie and others, may continue to grow in wisdom and grace. We pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. That we and all whose lives are linked to ours, our families, friends, and neighbors, be protected and free from anxiety, may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. At this point, we may add our intercession for thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Caring God, we thank you for being with us through the fury and the calm of life's voyage. Revealing your care to us and drawing us to new life. May we live as we pray in the protection of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
welcome again to the house of the Lord. As always, it's wonderful to gather in His name. Special welcome to our guests. I know this is not your first time, so it's up to us to remember your name. <laughs> thank you, thank you for coming. Um, wish to call your attention to the few announcements that we have. Really, there are uh, not many. There are standard announcements that we need to keep reminding each one of, of us of. Uh, there is one that's missing, and I got into trouble for that, but uh, <laughs> Naomi was so kind to me. She was gentle in reminding me that I forgot to put it, and that's about the baskets. The baskets for the golf uh, benefit. Last year, they really made a huge difference, and we are hoping we can do it again, or do even much better. So if you are able to help with baskets, please see Naomi. I sent a letter sent to the announcement separately, and I hope you saw it. And, uh, but if you want to help really uh, see Naomi, we need to get going uh, quickly because it's only two months, <laughs> if you think about, well, three technically, but uh, October 5th is not very far. And uh, there's a lot of work involved. And uh, so we'll be giving you more information, but as I have said, start thinking about it, talking to people about it, and uh, soon we'll have the materials for you to distribute, and uh, meanwhile, pray also as we, 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 we had in the summer, our struggle, even the struggle to raise funds is a spiritual thing, <laughs> and we need God to be on our side uh, to, to be able to succeed. The, there's an update on the uh, church entrance walkway project or sidewalk. Uh, we have been looking for uh, al alternatives to the concrete that was rejected, <laughs> loudly rejected. And we found somebody who is willing to put pavers like the ones we have here. Those are different from the ones we have there now. And uh, I sent a picture of that. And uh, there's a book in the, in the parish hall. If you don't like the picture, the sample I sent that uh, Bob recommended, uh, you can go into the book and uh, come up with your own <laughs> recommendation. I can't guarantee that your recommendation will be uh, taken but it may as well be because there are several factors involved the prices are not the same and other thing but they're also trying to match uh, the, the, this so it's uh, significantly uh, more expensive than the concrete but I think it will meet the two criteria that it be safe and beautiful uh, that's it really for now. Following worship, we are all invited to the fellowship hall for a time of fellowship and sharing bread together. Anything else? I think that's it. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs>
this Holy Eucharist in thanksgiving to God for being our refuge in time of trouble, but more so in intercession on behalf of those who are going through trouble, that God will come quickly to their rescue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> love you made us for yourself and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, O God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for a year and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
and now as I say we have Christ as taught us we are born to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
March 12th, let us pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.